this just fantasy? Indeed, so it is. This is St. George and the Dragon, retold by Margaret Hodges and illustrated by Trina Schartheimen. So, a uh, little bit of peek behind the curtain. I was raised Catholic and even got confirmed. And for if you don't know, uh, there's a Catholic ceremony called confirmation. And that's basically where you enter Catholicism officially as an adult. And you're supposed to take on an extra name of a saint of your choosing. And I chose St. George. And I specifically did that because he fought a dragon. Now, I don't really want to get fully into how exactly a supposedly Roman officer of, with Greek origins who died in Palestine, basically because the emperor was like, don't be Christian anymore. And he was like, nah, I'm good. And then they cut off his head, turned into an English knight who had a magical sword and killed a dragon because that's that's a very complex tale and and I could go you know real deep if I wanted to but I'm not gonna because that's I feel like a a quest for another day honestly because this particular legend is pretty foundational to a lot of the motifs of, I would say, a lot of different fantasy stories, and particularly, like, dragon behavior. And I think that's, that's really fascinating, honestly. And from what I have done in my little bit of research is that the motif of, like, a soldier attacking a serpent on horseback was just a thing like since Roman times and it was just iconography that was continued on in for military purposes and since George was considered a patron saint of the military he was just started to be depicted as a guy on horseback with a lance killing like a serpent and then at some point somebody was like, well, let me tell you the origin story of that image. And basically just glommed on what they knew about, or a dragon legend they knew and attached it to George. Uh, but that's enough of that. This is a book from my childhood uh, that I clearly read a lot. It's definitely dog-eared and such. And by read a lot... I mean, I looked at it a lot. And that's mostly what we're going to be doing here is just looking at the visuals of this because I kind of wanted to do something different. We've been doing a lot of comics lately and that's what mostly I imagine I'll be doing. But I kind of wanted to just take a little break. And also the day of recording, this is St. George's Feast Day. It just happened that way, folks. I don't know how. But I just thought that would be fun to talk about this book and this will be our first introduction to St. George as a figure of legend, as a mythological archetype, and also some really, I think, lovely art. First of all, I love this cover. I love these, these very embellished borders with illustrations in them. It's very Ivan Bilibin, who's one of my favorite illustrators. Uh, who's a Russian illustrator, uh, but I just, yeah, we get our, our St. George, and we get our dragon, which this dragon, let's just, let's give him a proper look, really love this, and also the, the, the quality of the watercolor paintings of this book is gorgeous, honestly, yeah, got our blonde white dude, who apparently, if you want to call him historical, which he maybe is, maybe isn't. He supposedly was Greek and Syrian. And I don't know. I, he doesn't look Greek or Syrian to me. But anyway, let's get into it. 
And again, more of this like border motif. There's, there's a lot of great embellishments. And also, so this is definitely a very mythological approach to St. George. Because like there's, yeah, there's like angels and stuff up here. And he's got a, his, his cross, which again, he's not a, you know, there's not a very little hint that he was a Roman figure, Roman era figure in this book. It's, it's definitely a medieval looking book. And there's English, like English fairies here, and I'm fine with that because it, it's it's a myth anyway, so might as well embrace that. Look at this two page spread here, and I love these kind of border elements, and yeah, from Ed, yeah, the Golden Legend adapted by Margaret Hodges. So Golden Legend is basically where the story of St. George and the Dragon comes from. And it's like, I think like the 11th century, and he was supposedly from the 4th century. It doesn't quite add up because basically it took until the 11th century for people to say, oh yeah, he fought a dragon too. Uh, but yeah, Margaret from Edmund Spencer's Fairy Queen. So here, so basically, yes, this is retelling a retelling of the tale through the lens of the fairy queen which i think i don't know that, that that's that's just great great look or a great uh angle to come at it when it comes to creating the art for it and i love all these little fairy guys this one's got goat legs So yeah, we're already getting amazing artwork, and it's just like the preamble. So we get like more like fairy people, just beautiful landscapes, and then you know our, our hero and his uh, squire on a donkey there, and his squire's dog and squire. You know, we'll see. Oh wait, no, that's right. He's traveling with a, a princess. So already, right away, a gorgeous image here. And honestly, I love that, like, he's on this big majestic horse, and she's just on this donkey, and she's got a lamb, and I imagine that the lamb is in reference to something Christian, maybe. Who knows? It's just a little nod, I guess. I love these, these rocks in the back, though. And we have a little, this little friend here. And I think, yeah, he's mostly just referred to as the Red Cross Knight. Because he's got a red cross on his shield right here. But yeah, just look at the quality of the painting on here. You know, and it's it's kind of a mix of, like, when it comes to his armor, it's not, doesn't look like, it looks like it's somewhat referenced, but it's like a mix because he's got kind of this, like, chainmail tights on or something. But any, but anyway, they're paying attention to like this this kind of fun little like reins and bridle kind of decorative bits, you know, and his horse blanket here, and then this little guy right here, and also there's like little paths in the back there, or possibly crop circles. Who know? And I like this little this little princess get up here. And then, yeah, all this kind of heraldry stuff in here. It's fun. And yeah, apparently he doesn't know his name or where he's from or anything. But he's sent by the Queen of the Fairies. And yeah, just look at this cool, like, little Viking ship, this checkerboard. Like, how, how rich visually is this book? This children's book, mind you. And just, yeah, like that's, I just, it's clearly like the method is, it is watercolor over ink. And I mean, I'm always gonna love that look because I'm an ink artist myself. But yeah, like there's just such a great, great use of color and such a delicate touch when it comes to all these things, especially like, look how faint it gets over like her veil there. And she's 
she's rendering these animals with lots of care and this like kind of dwarf elf dude like everything you know and it's definitely like a a m a a conic look for all these characters yes and they reach this they reach where they're ended up looks like she's staying in this little hovel which i love this little hovel that's got like trees growing out of it little dude's cooking in there and he's i guess up there with some old hermit okay it's an old hermit hub and he's introducing him to this city which i love that the city stretches past the borders right here man i want to see more of this artist's work yeah and there's some angels floating around there man look at these little this is fairy right in here More of these gorgeous illustrations in the pan in the periphery, and then we come to this little village, and apparently yes, they're in England, and he's also like given his name and he's George, and again, I guess because it's you know he's the patron saint of England for reasons, because I guess they wanted. He's a military saint, and they're like, we're militaristic, so he's our guy. Whatever. I just love, I love this little tower here. All these little people. Lots of personality in all this. I love the little flowers lining the path here. Yeah, it's, this is some... Um, seriously amazing uh, watercolor painting so here with little little ado here is the first face-off of saint george against the dragon which uh, i don't know why they're calling him saint george already because he's still alive and you can only be a saint once you're dead uh just just the facts folks that's just me and man is this a killer dragon so he's kind of i love the it's funny i love the ears and it makes me think of godzilla frankly or at least early versions of godzilla that have his little ears but he's got that like serpentine tongue he's got all these amazing scales going on here and as far as like scale he's pretty big but he's not gigantic and I also love that he's kind of like walking upright, but he's probably like flapping his wings too. He's causing all this smoke. His horse isn't having it. She, you know, she's running off. So, and he's got the lamb. Again, I love that they're breaking stuff out into these panels. And I say panels because I'm a comic guy. And then look how his tail stretches across the page and up into the border. And I love, like, these little illustrations of, like, sea monsters attacking the boats. Including a whale. But, yeah. I think it's a really great dragon. It's, you know, uh, iconic. Uh, or, as I would say, it is absolutely... See, it's hard to say, because I wouldn't say bog standard, because it's more than that. I think it's beautifully rendered, but when you picture a dragon in your head, it's something like this, probably. I would, I would imagine, unless you're thinking of like a lung from China. Look at this awesomeness, breaking out the fight into the border here. Like, what a great idea. Cause, and this is why I was so absorbed with it as a kid. Cause look how he's wrapping his tail around him. Here he's scooping him up and flying away with him. Look at this. Still a beautiful landscape below, but man. Yeah. 
And he's like trying to fight. I love that. This ho- this poor horse is getting scooped up. He's trying to fight it. I love the little, there's these little, there's little red dots on him. Nice little, little flourish there. Yeah, I just, it's, I feel like a lot of the illustration, illustrative quality kind of engages with uh, kind of medieval stylization and illustration. Yeah, and then, so here, he's, he's failed. This horse is still alive, thankfully. But, uh, yeah, he's just, uh, I don't know, crashed into some, like, a pool of water. Look at these guys. And the fairy person here holding mandrakes. I'm assuming that that's what they're going to use to heal him. But there's, like, mandrakes all up in this. These little tubers that look like people. Also, there's a nipple. Be warned, everybody. And she's cool. She's I think she's called Una, and she's yeah, it's like I guess like a fairy princess or something, helping him along his way. And I love that the fairies are are here to to help him. So anyway, he gets uh, suited back up and decides he's he's ready to go and so he, he goes back and challenges the serpent again and this time he slashes at this thing's tail and cuts the chunk off so look at this goriness there's even a little bone in there and again yeah this just using this this border motif i really love it because, like, there's isolated bits in it as well as continuation. Like, it's like, this is a continuation over here. It's great. And also, I really like his hat. I don't even comment on it, but his little, like, cap. Is, so, is, is that, I, I like that style of cap. That little kind of round bowl looking thing. Yeah, that, that stuck out in my head because later on I designed a character that had a similar cap. And it's, uh, yeah, it's stuck. So yeah, he's, he's thinking he's, he might get it the second time, but no. He's defeated again, and he's under a peach tree, I think. And yeah, he's all bloodied up. And they're, I guess, praying, I don't know. There's angels in this one. But yeah, I yeah I remember him being all bloodied up and watching that and seeing this, and I was like, Jesus, something that is different in this version than like say, the first version of the Dragon Tale is that he doesn't. It's not like he fights it three times and wins the last time. It's like he just does it the first time, and then converts everybody to Christianity. But that's not what this one's about. Here. He, he just challenges it a third time, and this time, he kills it. And this, that's one thing interesting about this version of it, or this tale, is there's no secret weakness to this dragon. So, like, another foundational tale of a dragon is, comes from, like, Siegfried and Fafnir, from Norse mythology. And in that, because they do make the sense of it that like oh his belly's softer than the rest of him and so he hides it hides in a place where he can get underneath him and stab upward and get his belly you know or that there's a horse smog who's got a loose scale that you can shoot an arrow through here he just eventually overcomes him and and kills him and yeah and apparently ran it through his skull which look there's blood sticking out yeah, he ran his sword through his skull, and there's a bloody sword. See, I feel like today, you wouldn't you wouldn't see this blood. And I, I'm I'm not trying to say that, oh, you know, things were better, then. But like, there's there's definitely a hesitance to show kids this kind of stuff, and I I guess I understand why, cause, you know, it's gory, but I loved it. And my mom gave me this book, and I'm fine, so.
I think it's totally okay. And anyway, he's saved this town. I really like this 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 hero's welcome image. They got all their their flowers out and all these kids here. I do like I just yeah, I think it's great. Yeah, what a great image. Look at all these different people. And then having to costume everybody and then paint it accurately, like just try to think of how much thought had to go into all of this. Right? Pretty wild. And then yeah, just I guess saying goodbye to our to our old friend George. I guess she's being returned to the king and queen, I'm assuming. I didn't read this because it's it's all about the art for me and I'm just going through it and loving it really and yeah just, just playing around in the corpse and I guess he's given a bunch of gold and jewels and stuff like that which it's a very saintly thing to take those gold and jewels and then he gets to marry the princess which again is not a thing except for in latter versions of the tale uh, and honestly, it's one of those things where the fact that this is St. George seems almost silly. I feel like if you would have called this, say, uh, the Dragon Slayer and just have it be its own tale and not bring in that it's St. George, no change is necessary except for in, in text form. And honestly, I think it would be the better for it. But I, fe I feel like because St. George is a known thing, St. George and the Dragon, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, that's a very lovely dress that she's wearing. And yeah, there's the, I feel like that's like an artifact I've seen images of. Uh, like uh, It's on the back of his throne. This little elf guy, dwarf guy is here. Again, it's all got this fantasy stuff. There's a cat looking at us. I love it. There's all this fantasy, elven, fairy stuff, and yet it's St. George. And then here, he, they, I guess, leave together, or he leaves? I don't even know. Okay, yeah, so I guess the fairy queen asks him to go do deeds for him, or fairy queen... Oh yeah, so I guess the fairy queen asks him to do deeds for her. Good for him. He's got a steady job and he's married a princess. And I feel like this is the illustrator just doing a self-portrait here, which I love. And I love this. It's maybe like the writer there and this is the person who they're, they're inspired by. I'm just just guessing. But anyway, and the dog and cat are probably hers. Anyway, I love this book. I think it's beautiful. I think it's a fun tale. And, and But the, the silliest, this funny thing to me is you just call it the dragon. You ignore the fact that it's St. George. And I think it's, it's the same story. And, pos and to me, even better because... I'm just, I find it so confused. I find much of the St. George myth and how he shows up in so many medieval stories as like a contemporary medieval figure. So strange, but I guess it's kind of like people will, instead of adapt, instead of creating a new thing, they will make an adaptation of a classic thing or of a known property so, or like, say, for instance, like I'll do a fan art of a character, you know, as opposed to drawing a really cool piece of a character that's my own. Uh, that's why there are no original ideas anymore, except for stuff like Sidequesters, my book. That's right. I didn't make a Lord of the Rings thing. I made a, my own thing, and this book is full of adventure, monster, characters, jokes, and 
just a, a whole world that I'm, I'm crafting one page at a time, as well as a friendship that I'm crafting one page at a time between these two. So that is a book that you can buy. It's got uh, eight issues completed right now. This is the first full, this is the volume that contains all of them. Uh, you can also buy individual issues. And along with uh, other creative works of mine are my Haxon anthologies, which are short, kind of dark fantasy stories about witches and wizards. And they, these are 60 pages each. No repeats. These are this One's four stories, one's three stories. And you can buy these on my website. And if you like stuff that's in panels, then you may like Three Panel Origin, which is my weekly webcomic where I create a character and tell their origin in three panels. But their superpowers are kind of awkward and weird. Like, uh, let's say, for instance, Porta Potty, who can teleport, but he has to use a Porta John. Or, uh, let's see here, Dr. Snakehead, MD, who went to medical school, graduated with honors, and became a medical professional. So, uh, and if you like that, you'll also like 3PO Comics, which is a book of short stories dealing with some of the characters in the world of three-panel origin, including funny made-up ads and a letters page with real fans of three-panel origin. You can get those things on my website. And you can find the inspired works of St. George and the Legend of the Dragon everywhere. 